uh, before culinary school, I developed a barbecue sauce. Okay. Yeah. Um, my family always bought barbecue sauce, cheap one, whatever, and doctored it up and made it, you know, taste really good. Me being prideful, I wanted to start from scratch. So I spent two years of trial and error and came up with this really good barbecue sauce and everybody loved it. And then when I went to culinary school, um, the instructor noticed how good I was at making sauce. We had one day where we all made homemade sauce. Basically, you're taking the butter and slowly whisk it into egg yolks. And if you whisk it too slow or too fast, it'll separate or it'll turn into mayonnaise. And everybody messed up with me. And the instructor was like, oh, you're pretty good at doing sauces. You know, I got it right the first time, right about to three or four times. So she said, you should probably hone that. Yeah. And me already doing my barbecue sauce. It was kind of a good idea. So I just kind of focused on sauces and vinaigrette aiolis and dressings and different things like that. Because I'm so good at that, I gave myself the name Sauce Boss. forms, for example, have been eating old food or rotten food or eating out of soup kitchens and things like that. It really makes you appreciate when you have something decent in front of you. Um, and that's why it's near and dear to me because every time I have something decent in front of me, I would eat it all and never waste anything because I don't know what I was going to eat again, you know. Hence my heft. <laughs> so, um, being, being a chef, I have a chance to get all these great ingredients I never had. And so, it helps me how I grew up helped me treat them with much more respect and to present it with respect to my customers because even though some people have had better situations than me, they may have not been able to have the type of food I've done or the way I present it. So I want them to taste food in its, in its best form, the way I learned and the style I want to convey. We're from Georgia and we we're looking for a place that serves some good southern food and this just beats it all to heck. I'm telling you, it's the best thing ever. You guys need to come in here and check it out. How do you guys find out about this place? Yelp. Yelp? Yes. Yeah. Promoted somewhere and it uh, turned into like let's go try it out. So we've been like so good, so okay. Uh, we got it came here one several months ago with a few people. And Regulars now? Uh, I'd like to say yes, but we all come here quite often. Now, so. Okay, so you like soul food? So are you from Utah? Yeah. Okay. But all of us have traveled. I've traveled quite a bit, and so. Yeah. Yeah. Utah's turning into a place where you can actually get some really good food. It's not. Yeah, we're not known for that. Mormon Joe. Mormon what? Mormon Joe. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So would you say, since you've traveled and you've tried different foods, would you say this is authentic Southern food? Would you say? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. And what did you think? You haven't said anything. <laughs> What's your favorite that you order? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I haven't tried that one. Okay. Yeah, I've heard about that. What about the desserts? Any desserts you guys have tried or? No, this this uh, cornbread is actually your dessert. <laughs> Most of the time we can't even finish it. So. Yeah, so good portions, good flavor. Yeah, great portions, nice flavor, good service, great service. I would probably say the catfish. I think that one has one of the worst reputations, the catfish itself. A lot of people say it's a bottom feeder, they don't want to try it, but so is lobster and crab. They're also bottom feeders, they sell for top water. You know, and catfish is just one of those types of fish in a way that it's cooked, it's so unique. There's not many other fishes that I've ever had that are breaded in cornmeal and fried and still come out flaky and, and delicious, you know. If you tried to deep, deep fry like salmon or something like that, it wouldn't turn out as good, you know. And other things are beer better, but catfish can handle that cornmeal so well and it holds up so well. And I think that's just a true southern type dish. That or the neck bones. If you want like a true southern food essential. Because soul food, the origin of soul food is basically the food that was discarded and given to the slaves so that they can make something out of it. And neck bones were one of those things. Here goes some bones. I don't have time to cook the meat off of it or take the meat off of it. You know, so the slaves knew what they learned in Africa, low and slow, lots of spice, and neck bones is one of those dishes. The dessert I would suggest is probably probably the bread pudding. Um, 
butter pudding originated using old bread. The bread went got too stale. I don't want to waste it. I turned it into a dessert. You know, and that was something my grandmother did a lot of times. When she showed me to do bread pudding, she told me to let the bread sit out, let it get hard, because that'll provide the best texture. Not toasting it, not putting it in the oven. You have to let it sit out overnight or for a couple days. So that's what we do here. We have the French baguettes. We let them sit out. And she always did it with fried apples. She would take apples, saute them in butter and brown sugar. Um, but I do the same thing, but then I blend it with cream cheese and put it right on top. So that dish is an old for my grandmother. I've been here about 20 years and I've seen the food culture go from treating our potatoes and ham to actual, <laughs> you know, really good restaurants. And, and it's evolved to a point, but for some reason, nobody celebrating the foods of the American South. You know, you got, you got hamburgers, which come from uh, various from Germany. You got hot dogs, stuff which come from Poland. You have Italian food, Mexican food. All those foods are great, wonderful. For some reason, there's there's a lack of that good old American Southern food here. And, and I don't know why, but I want people to try everything on the menu just so they know the history of how American food came. You know, the, the past of American history isn't as clean cut as other countries, but most countries, the past isn't as clean cut. But from what happened, we got this great food that unites everybody because it's American and it's something we have of our own.